Welcome to Chipmunk of Power, Writing Love. This is part two in our Page to Stage series. This is all about workshops. In our last video, we delved into playwriting and what the difference is between that and, for example, novel writing, and also how the basic format of the play works. So you've got the play written. What do you do with it now? Well, every play needs to undergo the workshop process at the theater. This will give you an idea of what the play looks like on stage and what you need to smooth out, what the audience responds to, and what doesn't work so well. Besides which, a publisher will not accept a play that hasn't had a workshop performance. You can compare a workshop to a beta read of a novel, only a lot more public. Get ready to put your ego aside and develop a thick skin. Side note, all this is, of course, from my own experience at my home theater where I've workshopped several plays. I don't have experience as to other theaters, but the good people at my theater do, and they guided me through the process from the word go, so I trust to their experience. So first things first, you need a theater to work with. A community theater will be the most accessible, and it's perfect besides. If your play gets published and performed regularly, most if not all of those performances will be done by community theaters, which generally speaking have a lot less bells and whistles than professional. So if your play works in a community theater, generally speaking, it's going to work anywhere. If you already have a theater you work with regularly, great. If not, here's what you do. First, research. Make a list of your local theaters, check up on them through their websites or whatever, and figure out which ones, in descending order, will work best for your purposes. Another side note, if you're unlucky enough not to have a local theater in your area, check up on the ones that are closest, even if you can't get there. Contact them and explain your predicament, and perhaps they'll have some ideas that can help you out. Okay, so... Starting with the first on your list, shoot them an email. Introduce yourself polite and respectful. Explain that you've written a stage play and you're looking for help in workshopping it. Respect is key here. This is not you gifting them with your magnum opus. This is you seeking to take up their facilities and time and offering little to nothing in return. Give them a week or so to get back to you. If they don't, shoot them another brief, polite email simply asking if they got the first email. If they still don't contact you, move on to the next theater on your list. Don't keep bugging them. This will get you nowhere. Now, we're not really going to consider full refusal as an option because otherwise this would be a really short video. Besides, most theaters will do you the courtesy of at least getting back to you in which case you will more than likely still have to wait while they weigh your proposal because most theaters have a board and you'll have to wait while they take it up at their next meeting. Okay, so optimism prevails and your proposal has been accepted. You'll need to work heavily with the theater from here on in. So find out who your point of contact will be and get their separate email if they have one. You'll want to get the rehearsal schedules of the current and probably next shows from the respective directors. You don't want to get in the way. You are more or less an interloper, and whatever is currently going on at the theater will take precedence. This applies even if you're not holding workshops in the central performance space itself. The first thing you'll be setting up is a table read. This is just like it sounds, and it's standard operating procedure for every play, movie, TV show. The first rehearsal is always just the actors sitting around the table reading through the script aloud. Once you have a date and time approved, word will be put out that you need help with your process, whether by email, Facebook, carrier pigeon, it depends how the theater handles things. They may have you put this out, or they may have a person who handles the process. The big night arrives! Yay! 
Ideally, you'll want to have three to four copies of your play printed out, including one for yourself, although you can bring your laptop or tablet. Hopefully, you will have at least that many people arriving for your read. You will more than likely not get as many people as you have characters, and they probably won't be the ideal parts for the characters themselves. That's okay. It's just a table read. The important thing is to have someone reading. In fact, the actors tend to love this because then they tend to get to play characters they normally wouldn't be able to. When I assign characters, I tend to just go down the cast list and assign around the table, including myself. That's right. If everyone else is reading, you should too. So that'll break up the variety of readers more, and a distinct advantage is you know exactly how those lines should be read. The only thing to really keep in mind here is if characters have extended scenes together, you don't want it turning into basically a one-person show for ten minutes. This has happened. <laughs> okay, so now the play has been read all the way through. Buckle up, because here come the critiques. Now this is not a bad thing. Generally speaking, you're going to get the following. A. Praise. B. A confirmation that the thing you always thought didn't really work doesn't really work. And C. Something completely out of left field that you never thought to question, not ever in a million trillion years. All this is good. It's why you're here. Consider the fact that it's better that these things come up now while you have a chance to fix them, rather than coming up once the play is done and published and before an audience, and the audience comes up with those questions, and they don't like the play as much as they would have otherwise, but it's too late to fix it. Alternatively, it could never get published because the publisher could notice those issues. Yikes. Critiques are a good thing. In fact, I'd say the worst table read I ever had was the one where everyone said it was perfect and they couldn't think of anything to fix. Now, I knew that was wrong because I knew my script was far from perfect. And even if they had to nitpick, there would have been something. Critiques serve a purpose. They can make your writing better. You don't have to take everything people say, of course. Do some critical thinking yourself and determine whether that thing is actually going to benefit your story. Now, you take a month or so for rewrites, then you schedule your next table read. That's right, you're not done yet. It normally takes three to four table reads to iron out the kinks in a play. Once you're done with that, then you're ready to schedule your workshop performance. Now, I might have said this a few times, but the main thing when scheduling is to be mindful of the theater schedule and the theater rules. When I did my workshops, we were not allowed to use the stage if it was set for a play in progress, so this really limited the time we could schedule. It was a narrow window between plays, which themselves consist of about two months' worth of rehearsals. In order to make the best use of this time, I scheduled a rehearsal for one day on one week and the performance for one day on the following week. I'll get to how that works in a minute. To get actors, you need to take the lead in casting who you would like to play the roles. Even if you're working from a fairly limited pool, this is nice because you get to cast the closest to who you envision in that role. You will never have this chance again. <laughs> you may not know enough or any folks to cast, this is where the theater can help you, so do not be afraid to ask. You will need to contact the people to set this up with them, though, and make sure to send them the script so that they can review their part. Rehearsal time. The rehearsal is where you really need to have your ducks in a row. Be sure to have a few extra copies of the script on hand with you, both rehearsal night and performance night. But as this can run into money, make sure that you have notified the cast that they will each need to print their own copy of the script. Also very important, review the props and bring with you what is necessary. Do not bring weapons, even fake ones. Don't do it. Someone could get hurt and the theater does not want or need the liability. 
bring like paper towel tubes or something. You have a rehearsal chiefly to set up some simple blocking. The actors will note in the script where they need to go when so that they don't bump into each other. Also, they'll be able to get a feel for cues, pauses, and how the scene should be played. They'll be able to go home and make notes and review, and you'll be able to do the same. Performance! After you have your cast set, you'll want the theater to put out an announcement regarding your workshop performance. Who is invited will be largely up to the theater, but with mine, theater members, family members, and maybe a few close friends of the writer and cast members were allowed. The performance will usually be free. Again, this is up to the theater. Note that you will not be paid. Your reward is the opportunity to do this in the first place. Workshop performances are by necessity rough and tumble. There are usually no sound effects, no lighting cues, no props are set other than what you've brought, and the actors will read directly from their scripts. Now something I do is create comment cards so that the audience can give their feedback. This is incredibly helpful. Once it's time, hop up in front of the audience and give a little speech. Introduce yourself. Tell a bit about the play and what they can expect to see up there on the stage. Hand out the cards. From there on in, it's all up to the actors. Sit in the back. Watch. Hope for the best. And by all means, be sure to take a video or some pictures. You're going to want to remember this. That's basically all there is to it. Thank your audience for coming and collect the cards. Thank your cast profusely. And collect the props. Be sure to leave the theater neat and clean. And go home and make any necessary changes. Then, format the play, covered in the last video, and start checking on publishers, covered in the next video. And of course, start setting up your next workshop for your next play with the theater. Because you have a next play. There's always a next play. Well, I hope you found this video informative. I think we all learned something today. Give us a like and let's conversate. Are you thinking about doing a play workshop? Do you have questions that I didn't cover here? Have you already done a play workshop and how did it go? Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to stay updated. I will see you next Thursday and until then, write with power!